Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This is a very interesting time, isn't it? Uh, we have some important things to get to for next week, and I know everyone's exhausted by the idea of this is the big one, but all these things are coming closer and closer together now, and June appears to be a very energetically charged month, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, right now, I am coming to you from Mount Shasta. I am at Red Fur Flat, which is where a large group is getting together during the solstice in June. And um, just because I'm kind of boots on the ground right now, I'll let you know there's still snow on the ground, but it is 80 degrees today. And slowly but surely, the, the snow is melting. It's beautiful. And Red Fur Flat itself is breathtaking. It's, it's just these giant, giant firs and pines and cedars. And it's, um, it's beautiful. And on top of being beautiful, it has, uh, well, the whole mountain has, the, the whole area rather, has this beautiful feminine energy to it right now. And I haven't visited um, Shasta <laughs> this lifetime, but it, um, the energy right now is, uh, is very much about balancing. It really feels like a very strong node getting activated and aligned with these different grid systems that we've had uh, misaligned for a while. And even though um, Ascension Rock is, is in this area, which is uh, a place where a group of folks a while back um, started visiting and they kind of created their own geometry around that. Um, and the visits that I've had to Ascension Rock, um, I just, I don't resonate with it. I feel like that structure is kind of, uh, broken apart and it's, it's got other kinds of energy, um, sent into it at this point because a lot of tours and such, um, it's become very popular. <laughs> so, uh, you get a lot of people wandering in there and, and it, uh, it feels a little off to me. Um, and I'm all for feeling out natural, uh, arising, accelerating portals and, and vortexes and creating your own because you yourself are a node on the crystalline grid. This, this crystalline grid is not just about this um, ancient Atlantean Lemurian stuff um, arising and getting reactivated. Uh, that, that crystalline grid is made up of human hearts as well. That big jeweled mandala around the planet is, uh, is the awakening. That's, that's the new dawn. That's the Pleiadian rising of, of the new sun that we experienced during the eclipse. It's getting fully activated and you are it. So, um, so don't worry about if you can't make it to Shasta during, during June and there's all this stuff going on at Shasta. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but, um, uh, you're you're infinite. <laughs> you can be wherever you want. You can sit, you know, in the pyramid at Giza if you like without getting on a plane. So let's just tap into that and make sure that we're reactivating our our higher skills of being everywhere all at once. And if you want to come and be um be here in person, um you know, connect connect with, with people who are doing it. Connect with people that are that are going to be here. Um, it's a it's a very tiny town, and I, I know a lot of people are are considering uh, coming in. It's it's quite remote when it comes to flying and driving and, and all that. Unless you live in California or the surrounding states, um, it's going to be a bit of a trip. But um, hey, it's 2012, and uh, it it <laughs> beats going to uh, you know. Uh, uh, on the, the typical vacation, that's for sure. So here we are. Um, and a quick thank you to all of the transmutation teams that were working during the eclipse to send that 
vibration of clearing the planet of of uh, all of this manipulation and control and thank you for getting the 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 backlash the 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 release of that as well um as as we know when you volunteer to be a grid worker or a light worker and you set that intention you also work as kind of a two-way transmitter bringing in light and also getting a, a big release through your own energetic system and you end up with you know cramps all the way down your right side because the masculine's getting a hit and uh, all of this stuff going on so thank you very much um and and also a little a little shout out acceleration to the star seeds um me as as first waiver uh uh, I ain't tired, by the way. <laughs> I am not backing down, but uh, it's it's just about time to pass the baton, and it seems I'm I'm feeling that a lot of star seeds are still in that holding pattern of pattern of I don't know what to do. I'm going to wait until everybody stands up at the same time. Uh, doesn't work that way. I think we've all learned that, and especially as a first waver, it, you stand up, and other people will go, oh, it's safe to stand up. So go for it. Um, whatever your gift is, whatever your skill is, even if you don't know what it is yet, start taking action on those creative impulses, whether it's healing technology or fixing things, which doesn't mean protest. It means creating something that replaces the old transition, building bridges, holding the doors open. Okay. Um, this, uh, the portal at Shasta, feels like it's we have a lot of these these birthing metaphors and it feels like this vortex is starting to dilate <laughs> it's uh it's it's definitely I, when i first got here it felt like a risement like like the ground was swelling which made me a little nervous because uh this is a volcano <laughs> but it felt it but it's just energy and it it felt like the whole the whole area was kind of breathing like a big in you know a big inhale and uh, as we know with with uh with source consciousness you know the inhale and the exhale is uh is very purposeful so the inhale is is bringing all the stuff back into the core for integration and then the big exhale is is uh acceleration of of the new stuff the creation so it's and and we're experiencing that right now in this universe this kind of inhale of everything that just okay that that's enough exploration that's as far as the exhale will go pulling back in and then the great exhale of all of this new stuff coming into this universe which is affecting our galaxy and and the planet okay so the the post that i the posts rather that i've done since the eclipse uh, include the the Hey Venus series, and I'm sorry sorry to plant that song in everybody's head, but you know I'm clairaudient and it plays on. So the the June fourth full moon partial lunar eclipse paired with this June fifth sixth Venus transit provide a timeline jumping window. It's decision time, so either you choose ascension to your divine feathered serpent that's Quetzalcoatl crystalline DNA uh, self or, or more of this 3D lower 4D madness. Now these bridges for Quetzalcoatl's return were built during the eclipse on May 20th and the grids are getting a realignment during this first week of June and actually right now to make the jump to the ascension timeline less of a leap across the canyon and more of a bridge and i'm telling you right now take take the bridge if this is what you want it it may be very evident to a lot of people that the old stories are over and whether they end with um and then i woke up <laughs> or they all lived happily ever after or to be continued is entirely up to you you are in charge of your ascension process as always nobody else is going to come and do the 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 rescue do it for you activate you etc there's continual acceleration of your process if you're conscious 
and and doing doing the stuff that resonates with you because it's there is no one way the right way to ascend it is very personal it's very individual and you just kind of have to find what what works for you and what you remember in your cells is is correct and what you had planned on when you created this path for yourself and then stick to it resonate with it activate it accelerate with it integrate as much as you can and and be extremely flexible when it comes to ooh, I was doing that and now uh, I'm not feeling it anymore I need to uh, keep keep up you know keep pace with with what's going on okay so we have a lot of support for this inevitable ascension of humanity because the new earth already exists and when I talk about new earth I'm not talking about the transitional high 4d thing I'm talking about the fifth dimensional expression of Gaia that then eventually uh, becomes that that star body don't know how long that will take please stop asking <laughs> when it's going to occur because we there's there's a lot going on there are a lot of things that have to occur in order for uh, a mama Gaia who has been taking care of us for so long um, it's very difficult when you learn unconditional love to completely abandon all of your kids in light of something that you want to do so it doesn't mean martyrdom she's not gonna wait forever uh, it is individual choice whether you want to go yeah okay I'll, I'll go with but it's uh, there's still a great balancing act going on and that that is the thing that we get to witness during the shift not watch it fall apart but watch the new stuff getting built and actively participate in this shift in this ascension timeline so this is what's coming up this whole metaphor of separating the wheat from the chaff when it comes to kind of separation which is an unusual thing to occur when we're returning to unity consciousness but again this is about individual choice the wheat would be integrity discernment and neutrality folks who are who are just like okay I am not gonna wear the mask anymore I am going to live from the heart I'm going to experience compassion and harmony and creativity because I know that's who I am I know not source you you as an expression of source you as you self love honoring respecting assisting humanity the kingdoms the elementals the planet and having complete neutrality when it comes to the the stuff that's occurring to correct the uh, the wrongs or the the wayward uh, from from kind of joining from preventing uh, this timeline from occurring it's not gonna happen you don't have to worry about that but you do have to be in neutrality so that you don't lower your vibration by by getting into that control manipulation judging people you want to dispel the illusion of fear from all of your endeavors and for you know modern day folks this means uh, this means all of these these little things from speaking your truth at the supermarket to co-workers to how you're gonna answer an email what what you're going to do with your life uh, all this stuff coming from integrity integrity authenticity genuine expression of who you are it is not about perfection or being saintly nobody has to be Mother Teresa or Gandhi um, they have already expressed <laughs> that that vibration already you're we're not imitating other things you're just getting to the complete integration of who you are and your higher self and when you do that you're not gonna find all of these distortions in your higher self it's it's beautiful you you will start to recognize the distortions on this lower level this lower level you know listening to this broadcast right now you're like hmm okay what's going on with the mind level etc we want to dispel that illusion of fear and judgment etc all the expressions of fear from everything that we do and it's not 
it shouldn't be work. It's very natural. You just have to place yourself there, be aware, be conscious, and then start taking action on creating the new paradigm. And that doesn't mean you have to create something globally huge. It means when you get those impulses, those intuitive knocking on the door um, notions of, oh, wow, you know, I really like to do blank. It means taking action on that. And it means not dimming down when it comes to conversation, when it comes to email, interaction, social anything, and how you talk to yourself. Because that's where it starts. It starts right in the home of the heart. You know, this this self-love is, that's the last thing that you that you have to do in order to ascend. You know, there is no getting around it. You can't love the, the process and how cool it is and not be um, okay with yourself. And again, that doesn't mean, you know, you're not broken. It doesn't mean fixing everything. It means recovering from the amnesia that we have experienced for so long and, uh, and playing with a, a lot of these different uh, energetics and accelerations and activations that we have coming up. When it comes to chaff, uh, again, this isn't judgment, this is discernment. Good, you know, good, not so good, none of my business. So the not so good category would be control or manipulation of others. This doesn't mean mass mind control. This means you, uh, you know, being angry because your neighbor's dog is driving you nuts or like, like trying to control your, your girlfriend or, you know, all these little manipulative things, you know, and, and as we get into the Venus transit, it has a lot to do with sexual expression, but I'll get into that in a second. This is, the chef is, is living from that lower mind, refusal to change until you're forced to change that whole lizard brain thing of righteousness, judgment, payback scenarios, um, disingenuous practices and behaviors, secrecy, and we hide a lot from a lot of people. So this isn't about secret societies. This is, you know, we're, we are the microcosm of that macrocosm expression. This is very collective. You want it to be gone, get rid of it in your own life stream. That doesn't mean I, I don't belong to a, a secret society, therefore I'm good. It means that you're, you, you know, we all have kept secrets in the past and perhaps you're still doing that right now so let's just have at it get it out there no more veils no more masks this is it uh chaff would be all the the service to self stuff that's been going on the sex power greed money materialism disempowerment of others hierarchy egoic lizard brain fear structures murder war conflict inability to adapt to unity that's a big one the 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 uh, dysfunction of just not being able to cope with the veils coming down, not being able to cope with everyone's going to know who I really am because then you're just afraid of who you truly are and what's going on there. That that inability to um, to not only know that this is what is emerging right now but uh, being terrified of it. I don't know how to function in unity consciousness. Everyone's going to know what's going on with me and I don't, I'm not okay with me. That's, you, you know, you got to take a look at that. It has a lot to do with clearing because this is, this is something that is keeping those constructs running on the planet. So let's, if, if you can do anything, help out the, uh, the uh, dissolvement of that stuff by getting rid of it right in your own self and and chaff of course would be that that deep loyalty that some have to dark agendas those soul group contracts or the bloodlines of distorted parasitic constructs um and it doesn't mean that you're just born into it but there's a lot of soul group activity going on with this atlantean battle uh, that they those groups were trying to recreate and it's you know it's the same soul group that did the nazi thing and the wars and it's just over and over again trying to recreate this this destruction in order to control um it's not going to happen so let's just rest 
<laughs> let's just lay that to rest right now. Uh, but there's there's got to be instead of watching all of that fall apart or hoping, wishing, etc. Walk away. Walk away from it. It is crumbling, and you don't want to be standing on something that's crumbling. Build the the new thing to stand on, and that new thing to stand on is going to be right in your own heart. That is your freedom. For a lot of us who have just been, you know, standing on, on top of the mountains with our, our hands up going, freedom, you know, just can't, wow, want it so bad, feel it, know it's right there, and yet we're still experiencing these, these, these uh, timelines crisscrossing and, and, and the, uh, the overlap of realities, um, that the separation of those things is is picking up now we're going to get a nice amplification of that in june so let's make sure that we're not not that let's make sure that we're making the right choices so uh, these choices are being pushed to the forefront in both the individual microcosm your own life stream and the global macrocosm this month and as ironic as it is everything is being expanded right now in order to release that density and then realign to accommodate the future outcome that uh, that I spoke of a couple weeks ago when it comes to these timelines that have already been created, already exist. It's just a matter of whether or not we, we want to jump right now. A lot of people have jumped already, already there. Does it mean they're still walking on the planet? Yes, absolutely. That moment has not occurred when people are going to start disappearing from the reality. Why? Because we are too intermeshed right now. There's there's too much crossover. And as these timelines start to get further and further apart, those spirals kind of create a gap. This bridge, this, this Quetzalcoatl eclipse bridge that was created a couple weeks ago, we have the opportunity to go, uh, I see it. Okay, I'm just going to do it. I just, this is, you know, final answer. <laughs> yes. Ascension timeline. Yes, I'm going. Yes. Does, you know, does that mean you're going to get disappointed? Yeah, if you set up the the idea that I decided to go on the Ascension timeline and nothing happened, holy cow, <laughs> what, you know, what what's going on there? Let's, I mean, I'll get into the, the geeky physical part of it in a in a moment but people you've you've got to stop thinking that these accelerations and these alignments are going to cause a big pop into the fifth dimension for people who are still in judgment of themselves and others just not going to happen and I'll, I'll get into that in a second you know it's like losing the luggage before the journey that bridge that's been created uh, can only handle light. <laughs> it cannot handle uh, dense baggage. Uh, I did write about the the conflicts within, with all of this um, judgment about the uh, the old stuff, and you can take a look at that in Hey Venus Part One if you want to. That kind of hiding, dimming down, waiting for someone else to go first dynamic or dreaming, wishing, you know, um, Venus make my wish come true. That's what that whole metaphor is about. It's, uh, that's not participation. It's, it's expecting something outside of yourself to, to create. And that's that, that participating in that kind of, uh, something external has kept us in that serpent eating its own tail cycle of stagnation. Yeah, that's not infinity, folks. <laughs> but it did feel like forever, didn't it? So as we, you know, uncoil that thing and realize, oh, it's a spiral, not a loop. Um, we get to we get to jump to to that other spiral. But for the first time in thousands of years, we have light intelligence at the quantum level, providing an opportunity to reactivate our true divine selves and just leave these collapsing illusions completely for a higher frequency existence. It's an opportunity and it's a proposal to your free will choice to do whatever you would like 
to experience. And it's your divine, it is your divine birthright to realign with source and engage this crystalline consciousness. But the choice to exercise that right is completely up to you. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, this, this is it. You, you've got to take the mask off, Kachina, in order to cross the bridge. So here, here we go. Um, and it's all this, this cosmic timing. That's why we get one event after the other right now. That's like, wow, this is going to happen. And wow, that's going to happen. You know, the, the eclipse last month did, did this. And now we're realigning with this new dawn that the, the Pleiadians planted on this timeline. And we're reactivating all these Lemurian memories and connecting with our star families and our true selves and releasing all of this dark energy from the planet all this light is coming back in you know it's like Sai Baba said um it was a, a beautiful ascended master to connect with if you ever want to do that um but the asc ascended masters are, are kind of uh changing their um their structure right now too so um but you can read about them online anyway so so Sai Baba said you know it's like it's like a closet where you put a higher watt bulb in there and you didn't even realize that it was dirty until you put that higher watt light in there and it exposes all of the uh the dust bunnies and the dark stuff and that's exactly what's what's happening but it doesn't mean that uh you have to worry about the global closet it means you just clean out your own you know because we're we're welcoming that in now we're welcoming in the light and going yes okay I see it. I'm not going to deny that it's there. I'm not going to push it under the rug. So this is, I know everyone's tired of, this is the big moment predictions. Uh, we've had enough of that to last another 26,000 years. And yet here we are. It's June 2012. With Venus about to make its transit across the sun and all kinds of synchronicities are lining up to dissolve everything that was. And I highly recommend some preparation before we get into this, like right now, like tomorrow, even if you have to take a day off. Oh my God, take a day off. Incredible. Uh, find an hour, find a couple hours, join my webinar on Saturday if you have time. Um, just sign up for my newsletter if you want an invitation. But seriously, give yourself whatever you can manifest between now and and Sunday to uh do a little centering, do some some clearing and go, okay, what is it exactly that I want to create? Me, creator incarnate, what do I want to create? You know, do the big inhale and before you take that exhale and just recreate the same thing, no more serpent eating its own tail, let's, let's get into some progress. We have an opportunity to really accelerate and amplify our own ascension timeline and a lot of us myself included there are things that I have procrastinated on for weeks months wow a long time that I I'm still like okay I, I gotta do it I gotta do it I gotta do it the webinars is one of those things I'm like I really need to you know stop uh, being so consumed by all this, this moving around and all the information coming in and the, the mission thing and the relocation thing. And I'm just, I'm moving all over the place. I'm going to be in Sedona soon. It's just, you know, it, it's been highly distracting and I've allowed it to be highly distracting. So I'm, I'm done with, with the distractions and I'm just going to do pure, creation exactly what I want to create and it does take sitting down and whether you're a list maker or whether you want to do the emotional clearing because you're like I'll be damned if I'm going to take this this deep repressed crap with me because I know I can't take it with me so I'm just going to amplify it if I take it into <laughs> this transit into June it's just going to make me confused you don't want to be one of those people who is just broken apart because they've in order to get that stuff to come out, you have to be broken apart. And a lot of us continually seem to be uh, in this like meltdown state every once in a while. And, and for the transmutation teams, light workers and grid workers, way showers, you're, you're kind of hit with it where there's, you have to release, you know, you're just like bawling your eyes out 
for 15 minutes and then you're like, okay, and then you gotta, you gotta move, do a little yoga, walk, whatever, and integrate because it's, it, it's just, it's laughable now how, how simplistic the process is. And now that we know what we're, what we have to do, you just take a look at it and go, okay, coming up for a release or some stuff isn't even yours. If, if you're a light worker, it's collective, but a lot of this is just reflections of what you have going on inside. So take a look at it, take a look at it. Don't be afraid to take a look at it. And if you're just completely in blinded by amnesia and just cannot see the soul contract, cannot see what's going on, get some assistance. And I know I say that a lot, but there are so many good people out there who are good with clearing, um, who can take a look and go, you know what this is, and you're going to keep creating it until you, you know, take a look at it and say, oh, okay, am I willing to let it go? And, uh, and I do emotional clearing if you want to hook up with me, but, um, I'm not plugging myself right now because, uh, it's, it's getting busy. It's very cool. So for clarity, because a lot of people are asking the same question, no, not everybody is going to experience this. Of course not. Haven't we learned that already? You know, you're the one who has to go to the restroom in the middle of the day, in the middle of, of work, and cry for a couple of minutes or like, you know, move your, your vagus nerve around or, or bind something to the sun because you're just like, wow, okay, that, that came up very quickly. It, it doesn't mean that your coworkers are going to be doing the same thing. Of course not. This is a very individual choice whether you want to activate this or not. And I'll get into the, the geeky technical part of that in a second. So just let's just leave these lower mind level concerns of everybody else's experience behind. There's a wider and wider gap being created right now. This this wheat and chaff thing, again, it's not about judgment, it's just about anchoring of timelines and amplification of timelines. A lot of people really want it in order to fully engage the activation of all of this stuff and align with all of these grids that are that are aligning right now that haven't been active in a long time. We've had a lot of distortions in the ley lines and the grids, the, the natural uh, lines of, of, of Gaia that were not just hijacked, but they were they were just off, you know, and there's been s different geometries trying to hold them in place. I know I talked about Metatron's cube and everything. And as that changes, nothing nothing stays the same yes we have power spots on on the grid that are are doing their their thing but as if you if you picture like a couple of different uh graphs trying to align energetically it causes stuff to occur on the surface and and for the 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 folks at inner earth too a lot of a lot of alignment going on there, but now we're we're working together. We're making it easier, and we realize that things have to some things have to change, and and especially around these vortex areas, you get like these these weird little like spinning energy tornadoes every once in a while um, that are actually occurring all over the planet. But you you get this these as these grids realign when they they start to kind of lock into place where they're where they're supposed to be for the next step you get these these weird little um energy dynamics which you can feel into or avoid altogether i would i would recommend just if you don't know what to do with it don't try to feel it because it's just it's releasing a lot of stuff and and it's fine to be um a uh an energetic conduit if you can take it but wow we have a lot going on so let's just like back off of of trying to, you know, uh, serve Gaia, serve Gaia, serve Gaia. We're going to serve Gaia by getting ourselves clear and by creating and amplifying what's coming instead of what's going on right now, right here. There is, yes, energetically, we support that. We send a lot of light to the grid. Again, that new grid has a lot to do with the human heart. Your heart resonance is about to get amplified a hundredfold in June. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, I hate to emphasize it's important. It's important, but let's get 
clear. That's the best way that we can help. And just wait for, you know, just accept instruction as it comes along because even even though there's huge things in the works and a lot of things happening with grid systems, let's just stay neutral and get ourselves clear. And when we're called upon and when you feel it, when you're really in that state of that fifth dimensional higher self energy, you'll know. You'll know what to do. You'll know how to tap into that. But right now, if you want to make the jump to that ascension timeline and you haven't yet, get get yourself clear on what that means to you, what you want to experience, and don't please don't make that choice out of fear. Because you can you can experience a lot of different things on this journey. It's not it's not your your final option uh, for for your existence. I mean your your infinite consciousness. So do whatever you want to do. Just make it genuine. Please don't don't say I'm going to the ascension timeline because I'm worried about you know getting some kind of cosmic payback because uh, because you will <laughs> if you if you're doing the disingenuous I'm only doing it for my survival level kind of thing that's uh, that's that's not a good place to be so a quick quick review of what's going on next week so the full moon partial lunar eclipse happens monday june 4th the venus transit when venus passes between the earth and the sun crossing that fiery south node which is this cleansing by fire happens june 5th 6th uh, depending on where you are in the world uh late on june 5th early june 6th Major planetary grid alignments are occurring Monday and Tuesday with an activation anchoring through Mount Shasta, which is a preparation for solstice when Shasta begins to broadcast this unconditional love frequency through the realigned grid systems. Shasta is this this hotbed for this um, this crystalline matrix that is pure pure consciousness it's not even that by by the time we get to solstice it is androgynous absolute balance of of feminine and masculine energy coming through um in order to to as a preparation step for that for that integration and activation in at solstice time the venus transit is busting apart uh some very old uh, heavily masculine sexual and and love related uh, distortions okay and and then that big pyramid shaped coronal hole that that some of us have seen twice now is making a it, it's coming around again for for a third visit and it just happens to be earth facing during the Venus transit, which I find pretty wild. And that, that pyramid shaped coronal hole, um, that's depicted in ancient art, you know, it's in, in some like Mayan carvings and stuff is, uh, it's the first time I saw it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> right on. It was just like, okay. You know, this whole time uh, myself as, as well as many other people have been talking about, you know, the sun is a stargate. This is how everything comes and goes. And when, when I see like this big, um, coronal hole shaped like you know this giant triangle uh facing earth during this venus transit when all this like cleansing is supposed to be going on i sense that something big is going to be uh coming and going um probably going uh during during that that window so uh so that was kind of fun to see that that's happening at the same time so at the core of this cleansing transit is venus and it's the eradication of deep distortions of love. It starts to begin to clear the collective consciousness of these Venusian love energies, the dependence on external things to provide egoic, self-serving, self-gratifying sexual behavior. Now, there's no end to the distortions of love and sex on this planet. That should be obvious. And it applies to everything the the sex power greed constructs that have done significant damage uh to the human psyche are getting burned out of the collective consciousness doesn't mean you're going to wake up on 
the seventh and everything's going to be cool. We know that already. This is evolution, but this is what, this is the next step. All of that horrific, all of the horrific behavior on this planet is getting purged. And that affects everything from financial to sexual to satanic and dark thing. All these just awful uh, things that have occurred on this planet and are occurring on this planet are are getting a purge. And nobody should sit back and just think that it's oh it's uh, that it doesn't affect them because oh I'm not a child molester I'm not a satanist I'm not I don't watch pornography. These construct constructs are collective which means this this vibration causes distortions on many levels it manifests the the need to control your partner uh, cheating on your spouse manipulative competitive sexual behavior um addictions and obsessions and fantasies which keep people out of their divinity and locked in this lower level egoic miscreation of that that impulse that demand for power over other people and it even expresses as repression of love fear of love puritanical hierarchy celibacy isolation all of these distortions are related and for for those of us who have done clemency missions uh for for the worst <laughs> for some of the worst offenders on the planet um it's oof, it still uh, is is unbelievable uh, what has occurred here, but it just shows you how far from source consciousness these constructs have taken us. Yes, on the on the big in the big royal we, it's all source consciousness, but it just shows you like how far. Uh, this experiment has pushed the limits of getting farther and farther and farther and separate and separate and separate from the the original exhale of source but these all of these constructs feed on collective agreement and believe me we have a lot of desire me or else money sex disempowerment going on in the collective and the the list of major and minor misinterpretations of love is long we found endless ways to express this darkness and distortion and this is about balancing it's not about judgment we're just getting the closet cleaned out in order to welcome in harmony and you know being genuine is being genuine in all of these hidden agendas and all of these control matrixes, even in your own life stream when it comes to sex and love and relationships, are on their way out. This doesn't mean judging and abandoning relationships or sexual activity out of fear. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means evolution, lifting the veils that you have kept on your own heart. It's individual choice as to what you want to do with it. But... It's not, hmm. it's kind of humorous now, actually, <laughs> because we want to have an authentic perspective on our identity. And as we move into that, you kind of realize what's, what's happening. You realize the distortions in your own life stream and it's th these layers and veils that have been over your own heart get lifted and how you deal with that is is individual choice but as we learn more remember more it gets a, a lot easier we just have to go mm, okay I'm not in support of that energetic anymore and as we kind of disengage kind of cut the cord from feeding those collective energetics it uh, it, it happens a lot faster globally it happens a lot faster um, again, the, the microcosm affecting the macrocosm. Now that things are picking up and these things are, are happening much closer together and getting much more amplified, very good to release, integrate, make choices moment by moment because it happens a lot faster now. And please, let's not 
blame Venus or the Venusians and don't think that Venus is like full of pervs or, or whatever. It's not malevolent. This is ancient history getting cleared out of the solar system and planets represent different metaphors and tales in our history. The stuff is very old. It doesn't mean that Venus is like that. It, it's, we're getting back to the divine pure expression of all of the planets and that includes our own. And Venusian technology is uh, will probably be very, um, very helpful <laughs> when we make the complete shift to to 4D when 4D Earth gets gets completely anchored, um, like Tesla's work or or you know other Venusian um, visitors <laughs> that we've had here uh, will be extremely helpful. Does it mean that we're going to be as technologically advanced as Venus? No, they've done something else with, with the information, with, with their own choices. Um, and, and I know some, some people are very involved with the Venus project. Uh, that's, you know, that's fine if you want a world, um, built on technology. Um, I, I see Gaia, the, the higher expression of Gaia, as uh, as much more natural uh, technology and and no need of, of form and but the but the fourth dimensional expression um, however long that is going to last will probably benefit a lot from free energy technology um, that is that is very Venusian in in nature and that's going to be very helpful for 4D Earth and play with that as much as you want you know again individual choice what timeline do you want to be on. Do you want to help out New Earth with that high fourth dimensional expression? Sounds like it'll be a blast. Go ahead, you know, and we all have to exist in that high fourth dimensional expression until you're absolutely ready for, for fifth dimension. So, uh, you know, have at it. Free energy sounds fantastic. At least it gets you out of the the enslavement of, uh, of you know, burning... Um, uh, dinosaur fuels <laughs> to run your car. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that I touched on in my article this, this week was quadrupolar Solaris, um, the, the sun changing into, uh, a, a four or maybe even more, um, pole system. And I sense that it, uh, has to do with a, something bigger, uh, coming down the line, um, and, and that, that pyramid coronal hole is interesting too, but you can read more about that in my article. Um, I'm not going to touch on it here. Let's get into micro wormholes since I'm, wow, running out of time. See how fast it goes. So micro wormholes are these portals to ascension as above, so below everything is opening up, cleansing, balancing, preparing, and this portal to ascension that's 5d for those taking the big leap is embedded right in our cellular structure and it's it's time to to step up to this this invisible staircase of ascension that we're all walking up is leading to an alignment of vibrations between you your lower dimensional self listening to this radio broadcast and your higher self in 5d um who is kind of receiving the encodements in this broadcast <laughs> And this marriage of the higher and lower, this great Merkaba metaphor that we've been playing with, the divine template activation, multidimensional convergence, whatever you choose to identify with, the same thing is happening. Timeline jump. This is where it gets a little geeky. So the micro wormholes that exist in the, the mitochondria of our cells, it's a slightly different um, structure. Uh, my, mitochondrial DNA is different from nucleic DNA. And it, uh, it, it is probably one of the factors in reactivating the pure human genome because the mitochondrial DNA is the stuff that keeps all of the information, the purity passed down through, through the, the maternal side, the mom side. And that seems to be where the pure stuff exists right now. Of course, it's not the only factor in the ascension process, but the cosmic trigger of all these galactic alignments, along with um, Gaia's increase in frequency and our conscious activation of this ascension process, 
is activating these wormholes. And as these little micro portals open up and expand, taking in more light, more codes, more harmonics, everything that they need to, to dispel the amnesia and activate that source zero point consciousness is assisting our cellular vibration to ascend, to increase in frequency, expansion of the consciousness to vibrate on the fifth dimensional self level. That's why so many of us are able to experience dimensional travel right now, right in the core of our own being. It is not astral travel. We are expanding our consciousness to meet the resonance of our higher expressions. And when these micro wormholes activate a strong enough connection to maintain the higher frequency, a dimensional shift occurs. That's you, denser carbon structure, going to that less dense carbon silica crystalline light body form, and it keeps occurring on and on and on, and our evolution just keeps going, fifth dimension, sixth, seventh, on and on. Wormholes in the universe are related to intergalactic travel, time travel, communication. Um, the galactic center seems to be stimulating these portals uh, within us as well as within the planet, similar to, uh, it's like a, a micro wormhole switchboard. This galactic center is like tying us into um, uh, the universe, the, the, the source, the consciousness, zero point. And even though DNA bilocation kind of surprised some, some, some scientists last year in the lab, uh, the metaphysical folks have witnessed and experienced bilocation of the self, others in the physical realm, and endless flip-flopping with parallel realities and timelines for a while. So with linear time collapsing and the spirals of major timelines separating, it's time to open up these micro wormholes that hold that higher frequency, that let that stuff in and activate those divine human genome codes right within your cells. As always, it's personal choice. Whether you want to choose the ascension timeline, that ascension path. Every major timeline has its challenges. It can be difficult to experience suffering it can also be difficult to witness it and maintain a higher vibration. You're going to have a lot of challenges to maintaining that higher vibration as in, in the coming months. Even next month, it's going to be hard to feel unconditional love vibrating in all of your cells and and see like the, the, the horrific things that it does to... to um, a lot of different expressions of consciousness on the planet. A lot of our fellow humans uh, are going to be challenged and, and overwhelmed, and it's going. I, it's it's freaky already. I mean, we we've got things happening in Shasta that I'm like, wow. You know, it's it. You really see like when when you're near a a vortex, and especially something that's that's this active. Uh, for those of you who are like, well, it's, you know. It, these vortex areas can't be that enlightened because look at you know the consciousness of the of the folks around it you've got people who are like how come they're not being activated or whatever well you get this this energetic mismatch that causes weirdness to occur we had like i, I can't even get into this this uh news story that that i was exposed to um not even you know just a conversation in a restaurant and I was just like what is going on oh my god that's horrible and it, it you know something happening right here in in uh, Shasta and it just it just shows to Goya um, what frequency can do and we have to realize that resonating at that higher frequency you got to learn how to hold it and the only way you're going to learn how to hold it is to make sure that when the dark stuff comes up within you when when it's just bubbling and and wants to get out through the high heart or or manifesting in different parts of your body don't just ignore it you you've got to take a look at it and it doesn't mean processing 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 screw the processing get to the the steps that allow you to to let that stuff go quickly 
this realizing that it isn't you realizing that it's it wants to go that your structure is not supporting it anymore that is why it's giving you such a pain in the butt or the back or the head or the neck or whatever it is learn your own way or borrow someone else's get on get on the call with me on Saturday because that's what I'm going to go through this we don't have time to spend it, you know entire incarnations trying to process stuff I mean enough already uh, we, we've got to cut to the chase and if you're willing to do that you got to be willing to do that because it's not fun it's not fun at first after a while it becomes laughable like holy crap I forgot about that altogether okay here it is here's what I'm gonna do with it and there are are, are very simple steps you go through and it can you know it, things that used to take years now take an hour a moment a day you know, it depends on how deep it is and how willing you are to surrender to accepting all that the identity has miscreated around <laughs> around your your cells I am hosting a webinar on Saturday you can get an invitation just by signing up on my website for the newsletter uh, there will be a nominal fee it's not as expensive as doing a private session because hopefully there'll be more than a couple of us on the call but uh, I'm going to just pour a lot of information and and some steps together to clear and prepare and assist people in making that choice and getting rid of all those blocks I know that's a, that's a big cliche term at this point but uh, but that darker denser stuff there's some very good exercises and very good um, steps that do not take a lot of time I'm actually going to take you on this journey on the call and show you how how you can do this how to expose that dark stuff and get rid of it and that will be on uh, on Saturday and I'm really looking forward to that um, if you would like a private session with me that is available uh, Thursday afternoon Friday morning and Saturday late uh, and I'll probably work all the way through Sunday afternoon and then I'm shutting down so that I can get into um, mission work and and my own groovy stuff for for Monday and Tuesday and then I'll be back on Wednesday if you do want a private session please um, prior to the the Venus transit and the stuff that's going on next week please um, go to my website and and go ahead and, and hit the pay bell button and sign get yourself in in line for a time slot um, so that I can take care of everybody um, please don't wait till the last second if you've been on the fence about it still offering the $77 90 minute which tends to be two hour sessions um, to anybody who listens to the radio broadcast just choose the returning client rate of 77 instead of the regular 99 unless you're feeling generous and you actually have beautiful abundance flowing in your life I'm very welcome to anyone who would like to pay full price uh, this has been a, a fantastic time connecting with you today I am sending you all the love and sparkles from Mount Shasta right now if you can tap into this vibration uh, let me just give you a little hit of it right now <sighs> and I wish you all a beautiful and creative and ascension filled Venus transit <laughs>